amigas welcome back to another one of my videos for those that don't know me my name is Beverly and for those that are returning thank you guys so much for joining me today as you guys might have already seen by the title of this video we are going to be doing the part two on how to print then cut and make your transfers with echo solvent I know you guys have been waiting for this so let's go ahead and get started <laughs> but I do feel like we need to explain a little bit before we actually get started with the print and cut process kind of talking a little bit more about echo solvent printing now mind you whenever we talk about echo solvent printing this is only the converted way to do so now this is not the original way of echo solvent printing like if it was to be using a Roland or a Mamaki commercial grade printer these are strictly desktop printers preferably the Epson Eco Tanks that we are using to go ahead and convert over to be able to do something just as much as what those commercial grade machines can do now at a much lower cost point. So this is why we convert. Now this was something that I would say that I started to evolve about a year or two ago and I started seeing on TikTok and I really was curious about it and just really did my research and just dove into it. Now with that being said, there is pros, there is cons to this converted method and I wanna go ahead and make you guys aware of some. So just keep in mind whenever you are converting you do have to add a special ink into these printers so you're not going to be adding the regular ink the real echo solvent printers would take which is an oil based eco solvent or solvent ink okay the ones that these printers take are a water based so there are water based eco solvent ink which are made specifically for these printers but even then so there is some cons that you do want to watch out for which one of them is clogging so if you're letting the ink sit there for too long and you're not printing as much it can tend to clog the tubes or the print head so that is just one major thing to look out for if you're not printing constantly because this ink is a different formula it's not the original formula that is meant for these printers we do take a gamble we do take a risk on converting these printers but let me just say my experience has been nothing but the best I haven't had or come across many issues yet making me not want to do it any longer so that is why I just really wanted to take this time to really inform you guys fully before you do convert if that's what you plan to do now if you do plan on converting I do have part one to this video somewhere up here on this side where you guys will be able to grab that video and check it out honestly I do think it's a very helpful video you can check out how to convert your desktop printer into an echo solvent printer doing the same as what I have another con I guess you can say which would be part of the process is also needing a cutting machine so with this process you will need to print on a printer then go ahead and put it over to your preferred cutting machine to go ahead and cut out your transfer unlike the real echo solvent printers they are actually a printer slash cutter which is almost a two-in-one so it's actually good because it will print your print and then bring it back in to actually cut now with this converted method of course Epson eco tanks are not a cutting machine so you will have to then print and then cut so that is another factor that you really want to think about when using this method a couple other things that I could think about from my experience with these converted printers is that when you do have a converted printer, just keep in mind these are heat free printers. So there is no built in heater built inside that's drying the print as it's coming out, unlike your real Roland or Mamaki commercial grade eco solvent printers, okay? So that is one downside to it. So if your ink is super wet or you have a setting that you're using and you're noticing that it's leaving a lot of ink on your transfer, you do have to mess around with settings to kind of modify it to make sure it's not dropping so much on there because what happens whenever it's actually rolling out you have your rollers on your printer that can actually cause these pixel wheel lines on your prints or even smudge it okay and a couple other things that I can think about as well is that usually with these converted printers because they're meant to take paper and not vinyl sometimes you will have multiple paper jam issues that I will have to let you know and be aware of because it is a common issue I've actually just managed to work with it it's always a hit or a miss in my printer I don't have that issue quite a lot it's actually not that often, um, but I just really wanted to let you guys know and be honest about this whole converted method. And lastly, with these converted eco solvent printers, since it is a water-based ink, remember they are water resistant, but that does not mean that they are alcohol or oil resistant. 
so I'm not sure with the real Roland or Mamaki or Echo Solvent printers, I should say, just in general. I'm not sure if oil or perfume is an issue or if they could still tend to rub off. But from my experience and knowing, kind of doing my research on this, is that with this converted printer, you cannot spray perfume or any alcohol directly onto your design because it will smear. So those are just some factors that I really did notice about this whole converted process. And I really thought it would be nice to let you guys know my honest opinion and some of the cons on this converted method. Now let's talk about the pros and what the benefits are to Echo Solvent Printing. So the major, major pro, because I know we talked about the bad and now we're talking about the good. Usually good news comes before bad, but hey, you know, it is what it is. So with Echo Solvent Printing, a really huge pro to this is that you don't have to layer. So think about using HTV and layering your multiple layers of vinyl with an SVG image on a shirt or maybe on a cup or anything like that. You know, I really hated those times that you had to put all those multiple layers of vinyl on your shirt just to make your design. Well, guess what? Now with Echo Solvent Printing, you don't have to. It's just pretty much taking a printable vinyl for your t-shirts, you're printing through your printer, and then you're cutting, weeding, and then applying. So all of your layers are all in one and no more layering. So that's a pro in my book. Another pro that I'd like to share with you guys is like, unlike sublimation, with eco solvent printing it is not picky to what type of material or what color you need to be applying it to a t-shirt and why is that so with echo solvent printing it's basically like printing on a printable vinyl that's already white so any design that you print on your vinyl it is actually going to pop because of the white backing so therefore you will have no issues with having to look for specific color of shirts or specific type of blends like polyester, cotton, none of that. You can pretty much press this material onto any fabric, whether that's lights, darks, cotton, or even polyester, or even a cotton poly blend. So that is a huge pro about eco solvent printing as well, which I do like. So enough chit chat, let's go ahead and talk about some of the materials that you will need so we can go ahead and get started today. All right, amigas, so these are the materials that you will need to be able to make your eco solvent transfers with this converted method, of course. So first things first, you will need your ink already to go. This is a water-based eco solvent ink, and this is the brand Eco Rush. I've already applied this into my printer, so this should be ready to go on your end. This is my Epson EcoSync 15,000 printer, and that's the ink that I ended up going with. Second thing that you will need is your printable heat transfer vinyl. You need to make sure that whenever you're buying a printable HTV, it is compatible with the type of ink that you are using. So since we're using Eco Solvent ink, it needs to be compatible with that. So this is Caesar Color Print Easy. I really do like it because it has a semi-gloss finish and I really have worked with it since May and I really do enjoy working with it. I like it. I mean, that's just my opinion. So other things that you will need will be your heat transfer tape or your masking tape, whatever you want to call it. So this is the Frisco one here. This Frisco one I do get off Amazon. I really do like it. It's a lot more inexpensive, but you do have an option to go with the original kind that goes with this one. This is a Caesar High Tac TTD mask. It's a masking tape and it looks like this. It really has no brand on it, of course, because it's just transfer tape. But it is the one that normally a lot of people go for and tend to use for this one. Now, I will say just really quick going over the two. This one has a little bit of a thicker um, material and this one is a lot thinner. So just really depending on what you prefer, you can go with either one. Like I said, the Frisco one from Amazon is a lot more inexpensive. And you need to make sure that you are specifically grabbing the one that says transfer tape for pattern heat transfer vinyl so that's the one that I'm using because it's a transfer tape for heat transfer materials and of course this one is the same but it's the brand that goes with this one here all right so next thing is that you will need your cutting machine of preference now this is my Starcraft solo cutting machine I love it when I tell you I love it I have really worked with it since the beginning of this year I would say maybe January and I didn't really get my printer until May but I really wanted to do it because I wanted to really focus on really kind of getting to know my machine and really understanding how to do the print and cut and how to use the other functions on it before I got into this process of printing because it is a lot to handle at once so I would recommend if you are starting off really get to know your machine before you start this whole conversion process it will make things much smoother 
So for your StarCraft solo, you can go ahead and grab it from Vinyl and Tool Supply Company down in the description. I really do love them. They have been an awesome company to work with, and I know you guys will love their materials too. They have great customer service, and I really highly recommend it. All right, so now that we talked about our printer, our cutter, our materials that we will need for this method of printing, let's go ahead and talk about the next thing, which is cutting down your vinyl. So I'm not going to show you guys a whole demonstration on how I cut down my vinyl because if you go in this video here that I will link, you will see how I cut down my vinyl rolls into then sheets, okay? So I cut them down from rolls to sheets, and that is such a helpful video where you can go and learn on how to cut down your sheets to be saving as much vinyl as possible. So go check out that video. Now that I have my sheet cut down, this is an 11 by 13 sheet where I will be making a transfer for something that fits my t-shirt, okay? Now that everything's ready to go, I will take you guys over to my computer so you guys can go ahead and see the process on how I do the print and cut setup on my computer and get ready to start printing. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started and I will be showing you guys the process on how to make your first print through your StarCraft Solo. So opening up StarCraft Create, I did mention in a previous video, you need to make sure you are on the most current version, which is the 1.019 if you're on Windows, and I believe it's the 1.020 if you're on a Mac. I am using my Windows Dell today, so let's go ahead and get started. So starting off, you want to make sure that you set your new project as your mat size to be matching your paper size which is very important. So somewhere here, I will link those two videos where you guys can go and check out the print page setup for print and cut through either Windows or Mac using your StarCraft Create. I hope they do help, so let's just go ahead and jump into it. So I'm gonna do new project. As I mentioned before, you need to set your mat size as your paper size. So I'm just gonna go down and choose my 11 by 13 preset that I have already made and hit okay. So I do initially wanna go in here and change out my paper size because the print margins and the registration marks are completely off, okay? Our mat is already set to 11 by 13, but our print setup is not. So I'm gonna go to File, Print Setup, and I'm just gonna use my 15,000 printer properties. And just for now, ju let's just change the paper size, which is 11 by 13. And we're gonna hit OK and OK. So now you can see that the print margins and everything adjusted to my paper size, which is good to go. Let's go ahead now and import our image. We're gonna go to import. I'm gonna look for my file, which is under downloads. And it should be here somewhere. Let's go ahead and see. Oh, it needs to be unzipped. So let's go ahead and unzip it first, extract all so we can open up that folder. And I will be making a transfer for my sister, which is gonna need a, which is gonna be a Chucky design for Halloween this Monday. So let's go ahead and double click on our file and open it up. It should automatically import as a PNG image. So once it does, it means that it has no background. It's gonna be just transparent. So we'll let that load for a minute. Once it is loaded, I'm gonna to go to my second panel down here and just change the size and just by adjusting the width. I'm gonna do about 10.5 because I know my paper is width 11, so I can't do anything wider than that. Okay, once that is done, I'm just gonna click my image to adjust it. But you can see that here it's pretty long still, so we might even have to go lower than 10 because the width or the height is still not enough okay so we're just going to keep bringing it down until we feel like it's a perfect size that it will fit inside our image other ways that you can adjust is just simply by pushing it up and it will warp it a little bit but not too bad especially in this case it doesn't look bad so i'm just going to kind of stretch it out and just make sure it fits my full page size so we can take full advantage of this image unlike crickets of course this is why i like the starcraft website or this is why i like the starcraft solo because you can honestly adjust and get your full potential with the prints. You don't have to waste any material whatsoever. So now that we made sure that this is inside our print registration margins and inside our registration marks and everything, we are good to go and to go ahead and print. So what I will be doing is going to create, which is like your make it button. We'll hit that and then we will go to print plus cut, okay? Make sure that you are already connected, like your whole connection is already connected to your solo. Um, and then you have this check mark where it says use software speed and force. So I can set my force and everything from my machine or from my software, depending on what you have it under, okay? So I like to control it for my software. So we'll do that and hit print plus cut. And here, this is the easy part. We're just gonna go to print. 
and this is where we will be adjusting our settings now keep in mind this can vary and change so check out both videos like i mentioned we'll go to properties and i am going to leave it under my paper tray because it's going to come out through the back feeder and i want premium presentation paper mats unfortunately when you do that setting you can't choose the quality because it just doesn't let you use the random size so you have to go based off what it allows you then we'll do advanced for our color correction we'll do color controls adobe rgb i don't mess with anything here i hit okay another very important step you want to make sure that you turned off bi-directional printing so it can slow down your prints and print at a much better quality and do not mirror your image this is not sublimation you guys so we'll go back to main and hit okay now we're just ready to go ahead and print so let's go back and start the printing process all right, you guys, now that we have started with the printing process, I've already hit print on my computer, so it's ready to go. And it's at a stop point right now where it's asking me to confirm the paper size. So remember that I'm feeding it out through the rear feeder, which is back here. So I will be opening it up so you guys can see where you would pull it out if you have the 15,000 printer. It just slides out like this and it leans back. Super simple like that. And what I will be doing is adding my paper and you want to be printing on your matte side. So there is a glossy side and a more mattifying side, which is what you're going to be printing through for your rear feeder, okay? Now, it is very important when I tell you guys to remove all of the dust or any excess off of here because what happens if you go through the printing process and it actually gets any of these speckles of dust, guess what? You're going to have little spots and blotches all over your print because of the ink there's going to be missing segments and that's no good so let's go ahead and make sure it is all cleared and ready to go so we can put it back into our rear feeder all right so now that it's ready to go i'm putting it into the rear feeder okay i'm just setting it somewhat in the middle and there is two clamps in the back that you need to just tighten so that you can make sure that it fits your paper size so now that it's ready to go like so make sure it is ready and then we'll go ahead and control the buttons up here so here all that it says it says the paper size and type set in rear paper feed slot does not match your specified print settings you'll just hit next you will always get this common reminder so it's completely okay it says current paper size user defined settings you just will hit print with specified print settings and continue and then hit installed so this is a process that it's always going to do when it stops you and a lot of people are like oh my god what's going on this is completely normal to get this you'll just hit install next continue just you know make sure you are installing it so now it will start to take it and then it will start to print so that was pretty much the printing process you guys can see it's not super hard and in this case i did not get any issues with the paper jamming but usually when you do get issues with the paper jamming you do have to play with it with the rear feeder if you're doing anything bigger than eight and a half by eleven okay it's always a lot easier when you're printing eight and a half by eleven because you can use your cassette tray which is down here underneath but anything bigger like 13 by 19 13 by 15 or anything 11 by whatever like in my case i did 11 by 13 i had to print out of my rear feeder okay so that's something that's just very common and you just kind of have to have patience with it overall this method of converting is really easy once you get the hang of it so we'll go ahead and let this print and we'll be right back to go ahead and put it onto our solo to start cutting all right you guys now the moment of truth amiga so you guys can see how this print came out now here is the final reveal look how nice this image came out super high quality and remember this was just with the standard quality that we set because of our page size and look how good it came out like i mentioned it is a semi-gloss finish but it is now dried and ready to go there's no smudging no nothing so let's go ahead and talk about what we will need next for the materials as far as the cutting process the weeding and then masking so of course you'll need your sheet of transfer tape which i'm using the frisco one that we talked about it's ready to go and you will also need your mat now i use this mat it came with my starcraft machine this is the mat for the solo so it's the original one i really do like because it measures 12 by 19 so it's perfect for any type of image that you can possibly print and cut through the machine so that's my favorite right there other things that i will use is a brayer tool just to make sure it's flattened out on my mat and i'm not scraping it with a scraper so that's why the brayer tool is very important and i also use a scraper tool 
for after whenever I'm masking you'll need your scissors and your weeding tool so let's go ahead and get to cutting one tip that I will let you guys know whenever you guys are placing this on your mat so with the solo it's not like the Cricut or maybe even the silhouette cameos or any other type of machine whenever you do apply your print you need to make sure you're putting it on the bottom right hand side yes you heard that right so it's not top left with Cricut up here it's bottom right aligning it as best as you can to the bottom right side to make sure everything is good to go so let's go ahead and line it up first so I'm just grabbing the print facing the way that it was printing or the way that it showed the preview on your Starcraft create program so I'm facing it towards me and I'm just going to be applying it to the bottom right of my mat making sure it is lined up on the line here and there and I'm just going to kind of give it a quick smooth with my hand but also that is why I use my brayer tool just so I'm not scraping or taking any ink off the image just to make sure it's flanned out completely so once it is flanned out and ready to go this is how it will look like so it is now ready for print and cut remember bottom right okay amiga so now that your print is ready to go we want to make sure we move some things around first so First things first, when you're looking at your solo, you need to make sure, or at least I like to make sure, that all of these pinch rollers, which are the black rollers right here, they're all on top of these gray grit shafts. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide the cutter head over, and just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So these little rollers right here, they're over like a gray grit shaft that's kind of gritty at the bottom, and that's what really holds in your mat. So you need to make sure that those are on top of each one for the center. Now, if you are having issues with your prints having roller marks or you don't want anything rolling over your image, you can certainly move your rollers over and to accommodate how you like them. Now, I haven't had issues personally, so I will leave them as is. I have each roller on top of each grit shaft on top so everything's ready to go so now that that's ready you will open up your pinch rollers all three of them so you have a lever in the back you're just going to go ahead and pull down and that should give you space now to put in your mat through your actual machine so i'm going to be putting it in and like we mentioned because you have your image bottom right you do have to pull this mat as far back as you can okay so we're just pulling it back through the machine like so and i'm going to come around to show you guys how I actually set it up. So I am just gonna make sure it is lined up. So there is a line here on the actual solo machine. It's a silver line right here that you need to make sure you are lining it up too. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more so you guys can see. Okay, now that I have brought you guys in closer, you can see that there is a silver line here that just kind of guides you to know that that's where the ending of your mat should be, okay? So I'm just lining it up there and it's lined up. So now I'm gonna grab my lever in the back Pull up my pinch roller so all three are sitting on top of the mat. Now, also another thing to realize that if you really wanted to adjust this correctly or see that you are straight and centered, you can make sure that you pull your mat far enough sideways so your all your rollers are sitting on top of your mat like so. I usually like to use this last roller as a guide point to make sure it has the space here and space at the end there to make sure it's centered. And it's also straight, of course, because you're putting it on the line. And that's how you know that your mat is not crooked or going sideways. So just think about it. Use that roller as a reference to make sure that's where you start. And then make sure all three rollers are on top. Plus, it's lined up to this line. And that's how I really like to guide it. Now, second thing that is very important whenever you are going in to set your blade this is not like the Cricut where when you hit start scan it's going to automatically look for this first registration mark you need to put your blade over this bottom right registration mark so right over this corner right here so i just have a random tool to show you guys but i'm going to put my blade as close as i can to this corner to start off the registration so once it starts reading it will go from one two three four and then it will actually start to cut my actual image after it reads these okay so i'm going to move my blade over with the arrows and I'm going to try to set it as close as I can to the corner of my print and what and what I do for reference is just kind of slightly push it down and make sure that it's similar or it's close to where it needs to be just to make sure we're right on top so now that it's right over that bottom right registration mark on my computer now I'll go back and hit start scan and you will notice how this will start to scan and it will light up and start reading all of them. So let's go ahead and do that next. One last thing that I do want to talk about is force. So depending on your cutting machine and your blade, how far you have it out, you need to be making sure that you're doing test cuts before you actually go in to cut this material. I personally am using 27 force 
and my speed at 10, but that will vary for each one. And we will go ahead and start scan. So it's gonna read in that first registration mark, that second one, that third one, and fourth one. And once it does, you can see now that it starts to cut our print. And look how fast that actually is cutting. So it has a lot of little nodes, so that's why it's taking a little bit longer. But usually whenever it has less nodes to cut, it actually cuts it out super, super quick. I really do love the Solo because it has full potential to be your next cutting machine. And like I said, check it out on Vinyl and Tool Supply Company to get yours. It's really a great machine. And there you guys have it. Super easy and done. This is how the image came out. You can't really see it a whole bunch. But now let's go ahead and get to the weeding part, the fun part, and masking. All right, you guys. So now I'm just going to go ahead and weed it and listen to how smooth that weeds. Super simple. This is the excess. No messy cleanup. Super easy. And now I'm just going to flip my mat over to not ruin the image and just peel that back slowly. Now that we do have our image ready to go, I will just grab my transfer tape, peel back that clear part, remove it like so. And you wanna be very careful when you're coming in. I like to come in like a taco and drop it down. And once you do, I like to use my scraper just to really get all those bubbles out and make sure it is ready to go. Alright, so now that your print is officially done and good, I like to grab my scissors and just trim around the excess to really clean up all that excess transfer tape that was a little off. And doing this will just kind of help give you guys a better presentation if you are selling the transfers. Now, I will let you guys know of some tips and tricks on how to cure your prints. Now, I know what you guys are going to say. It's like, what? You have to cure your prints? And the answer is yes. Whenever you do make your eco solvent transfers, or at least I like to let them sit overnight or about 24 hours until the back starts to turn a little bit pink. And by that, I mean this. So you guys can see this transfer probably barely, but here at an angle, you guys can see that it starts to turn a light pink color, which this means that it's ready to go and ready to press on a shirt. So I'm not necessarily going to be pressing this one with you guys today. I will let this sit overnight and probably press it tomorrow, and I will try to make a video for you guys then. But in the meanwhile, we still have one that we are able to press on a t-shirt today, so we can go ahead and still show you guys the pressing process. Now, curing your prints, like I mentioned, is very important. It really is a method where the ink absorbs into your vinyl overnight and the longer it's absorbed think about it as a cotton swab going into water or any liquid the longer it's absorbing that liquid the longer lasting it's going to be so it's very very important that you're doing so that way you have the best and long lengthy life of your transfer on your apparel so it's very very important let's talk about the care instructions so far for these prints so these are my care instructions and my application instructions on how to do it after care and how to apply so for application instructions i like to let my customers know that you need to preheat your garment for two to three seconds before temperature should be at 305 fahrenheit or 150 celsius medium pressure 10 to 15 seconds and do a hot or a cold peel with these eco solvent transfers now when it comes down to eco solvent care instructions for your t-shirt that's what i like call them i make sure that i let them know that when they're washing them they need to be turned inside out machine wash cold with mild detergent dry on a low setting or air dry do not dry clean do not iron directly on the design and last of all like we talked about do not apply any alcohol perfume or oils directly to your design that is very crucial because if you do they will smear you guys so these are some of the instructions that I like to include in my packages because I do sell my transfers. And of course, if you guys are interested in these eco solvent transfers, you guys can go down and order in the link down below in my description to order your own customs. All you have to do is send me your images and I can go ahead and get them printed for you guys. Now let's go ahead and get over to the pressing part. So now what I do once I have my shirt ready, I've already lint rolled the area so you need to make sure that you get all the fuzz or any excess off. 
and what I will be doing next is here you can see that pink that we were talking about earlier I will just grab my weeding tool kind of separate this backing um, anytime I do send these transfers over to my customers I let them know of the instructions on how to peel this backing off it clearly says here don't forget to peel this backing um, before applying transfers to garment do not press without backing so a lot of people in the past they have pressed with it so that's why now I make sure I have a disclaimer on my transfers making sure they know not to be pressing with it So let's go ahead now and start applying our design to the middle of the shirt. So like I mentioned, it's already prepped and ready to go. I'm going to be using my t-shirt ruler. I got this from Etsy. Again, everything will be linked in the description. So I'm going to be applying my t-shirt ruler, making sure that it's centered somewhat. And I'm not going to press it just yet because I need to make sure that we pre-press it first. But I just want to give myself an idea of where this will be placed in the middle of the t-shirt. So I really do like this ruler and the process makes it so much easier. So let's go ahead and wait for a heat press to heat up so we can pre-press then do our final pressing. Stay tuned. Alright, so now that my heat press is set at 305 for about the 15 seconds, I'm going to just swing it sideways to kind of go ahead and pre-press my t-shirt in the area that I will be needing to place my transfer on. So I don't like to press the collar, so I'm just gonna press somewhat of the area where it will be pressed down. I'm gonna do about two to three seconds just to kind of take away any moisture and just to make sure everything's ironed out perfect. And once we do so, we'll just lift up and it is ready now to go ahead and apply our transfer. So let's go ahead and do so now. So keep in mind, whenever I do apply my transfer, I like to make sure it's at least three fingers down from the collar or by using your t-shirt ruler, you will have enough space to place your transfer on. So I will use my t-shirt ruler, kind of just put it right underneath the collar in the center. And that will give me an idea of where to place my actual transfer now that I have removed the backing from it. Once I have the transfer, I will just make sure it is centered, it is lined up there, and just make sure it is all good, and place it down, remove my actual ruler, and I always like to get a visual of it first, kind of like this, to make sure it's right where you want it to be. Now once it is centered and everything works perfectly, you are just going to go ahead and put your transfer tip down, and I like to use a Teflon sheet for extra security in between your heat press. To make sure that nothing will get ruined nor will it stick to your top plate of your heat press so i'm just using this reusable teflon sheet you can also use parchment paper or whatever you have on hand and i'm just going to do a firm medium press for the full 15 seconds once it's done you just lift up and we will remove the teflon sheet and we will wait for it to cool down just a little bit not too much but now you are able to grab that corner of your transfer tape and peel off that transfer tape and you will be left with your beautiful design on your shirts. Now, you guys will see that sometimes on your transfer tape, you will have a little residue. Maybe you see it, maybe you don't. And that is completely normal. It doesn't actually peel off any of the color from your shirt. So everything's good to go. So let's go ahead and try it on and review our final thoughts on this Echo Solvent Transfer printing method. All right, Amiga, so this is how the t-shirt ended up turning out. It really did turn out really good. The feel of this material is super soft and comfy. It is not over-exaggerating or super heavy on the shirt. I really do like it. And of course, the shirt from Press Hall Made, I really do like it as well because it's super comfy and really breathable as well, especially in this hot weather or the cold. You don't want to be wearing something super thick and heavy, even though you have a sweatshirt on. So I think this is perfect. This is a Bella Canvas t-shirt. Make sure you guys check out my discount code with press all down in the description down below to get your hands on more blinks check out all their apparel they have tote bags they have bags they have sweatshirts a whole bunch of blanks that you guys can choose from to be honest that is my favorite one-stop shop to be shopping at press hall so check them out in the description down below now let's go ahead and just kind of review these prints so this was the print that we did earlier it is super vibrant really nice i really did like how the quality came out on these so it is really my favorite method at the moment of for printing and cutting for t-shirts it's super easy you guys it's super super easy to just simply print 
you cut, you weave, and you put it onto your shirt. So I really do hands down like this method of converted printers. Now if you are interested in converting your printer, make sure you check out my previous videos and do a lot more research on it. Because like I said, there is pros, there is cons, but ultimately it is down to your decision on what you choose to do for your t-shirt business. If you guys like this video, make sure you guys give me a thumbs up, you subscribe to my channel, and turn on your post notifications button to be notified every time I upload a video. I hope this video helped you guys out on the Echo Solvent printing process with my StarCraft Solo and my ET15000, and I will see you guys next time. Bye, amigas!